Hello YouTube. In this video I want to show you some new screens that I added to my head scan gauge. Let me just start it new so you can see the startup animation. And if you like you can have your car logo and brand name or main model. And uh, this is the first screen, which shows your kilometers per hour and RPM. Of course, it can be switched to miles per hour by long touching on the touch sensor. And the next screen is uh, miles per hour only. You can, of course, again, you have two touch sensors on both sides. And uh, so this is the second screen. I'm just powering it up here. And this is a USB adapter because I uploaded the codes. So it's, uh, it's not connected to my simulator. So that's why you see zeros here. So the next screen is the RPM screen. And this is actually a debug feature for the LDR for the sensor I have here to dim the display. Get the dust out of it. So the next is the coolant temperature. Oil temperature, not all cars have this. Just as a reminder, I did tell, uh, say that before. And then you have intake air temperature, ambient air. Of course, this one changes also from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You have throttle position in percent. You have battery voltmeter and you have also the five neo pixels up here that show the different values in uh, our, um, with the neo pixels. Also on the RPM screen you have the shift light and this is the fuel economy. This is boost. If you don't have a or if you have a normally aspirated engine it goes to minus till up to zero and if you have a turbo it goes up to 1.6 bar and the imperial version if you switch it you have it in psi and then you have afr air to your fuel ratio which is normally optimally 14.7 when you start your car it's around 11 12 something and then once it warms up it comes to 14.7 and these are the voltages of the O2 sensors. My car is a V6, so you have four O2 sensors. On four cylinder engines, you have only two O2 sensors. And this is the gear indicator, which shows also the speed and the throttle position. This is the catalytic converter temperatures. Again, it does switch to Fahrenheit when you're in Imperial. And then you have 0 to 60 timer or 0 to 100 kilometer timer. Again, it does switch, and then you have the quarter mile run timer, which you're supposed to start or hit the floor when your uh, when the green LEDs light up. You have the fuel tank in percent, and here comes the new screen. So this one shows you the distance traveled. In this case, here it's kilometers. It will be also in miles. Um, distance traveled since your mill indicator is on the check engine light is on and uh, distance traveled uh, since it is off so it shows you two different uh, values obviously if you reset your DC, DTC error uh, then it does reset here as well here you have engine load in percent here you have the run timer which shows you seconds on the bottom, minutes, hours uh, since you start the engine. So if you drive somewhere, I mean, it does it automatically. You don't have to do anything. Uh, it starts counting the time. And once you arrive somewhere, you can check how long your travel time did take. And uh, this is the error screen, the DTC error screen reading message, uh, reading screen. It shows you here mill off. If you have an error message, it will say on, and then the check uh, engine uh, bitmap will turn yellow, and then it will show you the number of errors you have. 
and it will display the code here. I had the other day uh, error code P0420, which has to do with the O2 sensor, um, because I have a small leak, so it did show that. And the next screen is, here you can clear your error. It does count down from 5 seconds to 1 and then 0 and then it does clear it. Uh, I will not quite finished yet because I want to have... Uh, it will only clear it if you touch the sensor. So right now it does clear it automatically and uh, you might not want to clear it. So that would be obviously uh, not good if you clear it without you wanting it. And also, big, big, big disclaimer: Do not clear any DTC code if you're not know if you don't know what you're doing. Because if you have a serious fault and you clear it and you continue to drive your car, you can damage your car, engine, or whatever is wrong with it. So only clear it. <coughs> Excuse me. Only clear your errors. Uh, if you know what they are and they come on only once in a while and you know what they are you can clear them without having to do anything like on my o2 sensor for example it only comes on once in a while if i try longer distances on short distances it doesn't come on so for me it's uh actually good that i can clear it now through my can gauge because otherwise i have to pull the gauge out or i mean unplug it uh, plug in an OBD uh, dongle and then use an app on my phone to clear the code. So use this with caution. Um, really use it with caution or don't use it if you don't know what you're doing. So this is it and then you have the off screen and then it starts again. Of course you can go forward and back in the screens uh, as I showed before. So this was the update with uh, what four or five new screens and I'm not done yet. I'm still working on some other screens that I want to add. So this is it. Um, this gauge has also Bluetooth capability. Uh, so all the most of the screens are being transmitted via Bluetooth to your phone and with any bluetooth terminal app you can see the value in real time updating on your phone so if you have this in the car and you are say outside of the car in the engine compartment and checking something you can have your phone with you and see it at the same time and uh, as the display just shows it so obviously if you're in the rpm screen your phone will show the rpm if you switch to the coolant it will show you the temperature and so on so whatever is on this screen it will show on your phone so that is it I think um, yeah the other screens I showed you I might make another video with the simulator attached but uh, the new screens are not on my simulator code so those still won't show I might just show it in your in the car that might be a better option to do um, I did clear my codes in the car obviously trying the code um, but I can I know for example I have a fuse 19 if I pull that I do get an error about my um, cooling fans not working so I can do that and simulate the code without I mean without damaging my car or the engine or whatever so these are the new screens if you happen to buy the head scan gauge from me <clears throat> you will of course get the updated uh, code via hex file and uh, I have most likely sent you the USB adapter and with that you can upload the new code I'm still working on um, the option to upload code wirelessly over Bluetooth uh, this gauge uses the Atmega 1284P 
and on that chip I cannot upload code wirelessly yet. On the Atmega328 I am able to, but obviously this code is way too big for the Atmega. And let me actually just check it, I have it uh, open on my on my screen here. Don't mind the TV next to my monitor, I'll put it over there. Uh, by the way, it's 5.20 in the morning. This is still winter time, so I did not update it. And um, yes, right now the code is compiling to 50% program space and 12% dynamic memory on the 1284 so I still have plenty of room to add new features and bitmaps and whatnot. So and the code is uh, in the meantime over 3000 lines long. So this is it. Um, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will talk to you on the next one. Take care everybody and since it's Sunday, have a great week. Till later.